right, guys, last little bit on the New Deal. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking at the New Deal by the numbers. Um, so the things you'll need to be able to do this today are, um, you'll need the New Deal by the numbers handout, you will need the New Deal by the numbers PowerPoint. Again, all this stuff is posted on Canvas. All right, so at the top of that sheet, we're gonna talk about a couple key terms. This big expression we wanna learn here is something called Keynesian spending or Keynesian economics. Um, so traditionally in the past, when the country has been in an economic downturn, the government's response has been relatively little, right? We talked about it with Hoover. Um, he couldn't really cut taxes. Um, he didn't believe in spending money. He didn't believe in welfare programs. But Keynesian economics is a little bit different. So what they basically argue is uh, that the government can directly influence the demand for goods and services by altering tax policies and public expenditures. Oh, that's fancy sounding. Now, what does it actually mean? All right, cool. So the government can help to kind of shift or alter the economy of the country. How? Okay, one, they can cut taxes. How does that help? Well, you put more money in the hands of people, they'll spend it, and that pushes the economy up. Or, as we kind of talk with the WPA and the CCC and all those other programs, if the government spends more money, all right, and tries to kind of uh, prop up the economy that way, right? So here's the thing, the expression that is often used to describe it, and I have it, the government can kickstart the economy by increasing spending, right? The expression that I was taught in high school was prime the pump, which I think is an old person thing to say, but the idea is you can't just kickstart, I'm gonna use old man, uh, owner, homeowner metaphor here. All right, so I can't just go grab my mower and start pulling on that string and get the engine going, right? Like that doesn't work that way. Um, in order to get it fired up, I need to go and push the primer button it feels like a million times and then pull the string so it gets the engine warmed up enough to start humming and start i can start mowing my lawn so if the government can prime the pump by spending money or putting more money in the hands of people that can help drive the economy upwards all right so here's the thing does this work eh. and that's what we're going to get to right this has become a widely adopted um uh, strategy by governments we're looking again i mentioned before i'll talk about it again the stimulus package because of coronavirus of $2 trillion fits within this this uh, framework. We are going to basically try to put money in the hands of people, that they will spend it, uh, they'll keep companies afloat, they'll hire people, and that will lead to an economic recovery. All right, so the way we're going to study whether or not the Keynesian system works and whether or not the do New Deal actually works is to start looking at things, um, statistics, right? So first statistic you've got right here in front of you government spending. So I broke it down to Hoover and Roosevelt. And now I'm not super worried about you right now every year. Please don't do that. Save yourself the headache of that. But what we want to notice here is this, right? If the depression started in 1929, at the very tail end, um, what's the trend we notice with spending? We see what that slight uptick in 30 and 31, but then in 32, we see it going down, which means the government is actually spending less. How's that, what does that mean to Keynesian economics? It means they're not doing Keynesian economics. Again, that makes sense. Hoover didn't believe in this stuff. He didn't believe in government intervention, so he's not spending the money. Now, if we look down at Roosevelt's New Deal, we start seeing the numbers climb every year for the most part. There's an upward trend, certainly, yeah, that doesn't, it goes down from 36 to 37, but um, I mentioned before, that's what we call the Roosevelt recession. Things got a little bit worse. Um, but basically, the trend we want to get out of both this is that, uh, out of this is that Roosevelt basically begins to spend more money. So he's absolutely following through on Keynesian economics. And the other way you can tell another statistic we're jotting down: government uh, spending as percent of GDP was twelve percent. All right, during Hoover's administration, go down to Roosevelt, fifteen point four percent. So. When I say to you they're going to spend more money, they can't, again, they can't spend themselves out of the depression, but the hope is you spend enough that it creates that spark that gets you going. Now, the big question we're going to try to answer was, is the New Deal effective? Did it actually successfully end the Great Depression? And so the numbers you're going to be looking at, and I'll explain that more in a second, are designed to kind of give you a chance to explore that question. Now, you're going to want to be able to, how do you determine whether or not it was effective and worked? I gave you a bunch of different lenses and questions to use. So did it address the major problems of the Great Depression? Okay, did it? Yeah, I think you can make that argument it did, right? Um, did it provide the three R's, perhaps? 
did the New Deal end the Great Depression? That's the big question. Did it actually successfully put people back to work? Did it did it create economic prosperity and security once again? Um, so whatever lens, it could be this big, huge lens of like, it saved the country from collapse um, to something more specific. Like, did it actually, did all these programs and all the spending put the U.S. back on the right path economically? Um, another thing that people often have criticized the New Deal for is it changed government for the worse. It got bigger. It, some would argue it helped create well, what is now known as a welfare state. So again, the New Deal is a very complicated topic. It's for you to determine. All right. So here's what you want to do. There's a PowerPoint posted on Canvas. It's got three different statistical measures on how we could analyze the New Deal. Uh, unemployment, GDP, um, debt. Those are, th I think, the three numbers I gave you guys. And so, again, you don't have to write down every number, but you want to write down kind of the trends so you can begin to make a, a strong, serious analysis. Uh, now, a couple of the things that we want to talk about. GDP. This one you're going to have to do mo the most math on. All right. GDP is the full gross domestic product, everything that we make in this country in a year, all the money that's generated. Right. In theory, if things are going well, that number should climb two to three percent a year if things are going well. So if one year it's 100, the next year should be 103. And then after that, 106 and then probably then 110. That's strong growth. So look at the GDP and you want to measure that. Let me also throw out this other idea before you look at it. Keep in mind, if it's supposed to be three percent a year. Just because you get back to what GDP was six years, what, what it was six years ago, doesn't mean you've covered. It actually means you're still kind of behind because you're supposed to get three percent a year. Make sense? All right. Unemployment in a strong economy, your unemployment should be between five to six percent. Um, in a very good economy, you're in the fours. In the 1920s, we were in the threes. Presently, we'll see how where we are later. But like, we're just under four right now. I don't think for much longer. But the point is this, a strong economy is going to have an unemployment rate in the low single digits. Okay, we'll look at the numbers and see what they tell you. And the national debt, right? Okay. You want to look at the total number, right? National debt matters. But you, what you really want to know is how much is that debt compared to our full GDP? Is it a huge percentage or a small percentage? If it's a small percentage, it's not that big a deal. All right. Is government spending, is government spending, is government spending what's propping up the economy or is it just kind of, pushing along lightly, gently, right? like, a, like a light breeze. All right, and then here's what you want to do. You want at the bottom want to assess the New Deal, all right? You can pull in everything we've talked about. You can talk about the economics and the numbers and all those statistics. You can talk about um, the dire straits America was in. So you should be able to make an argument either way when, you're, when it's all said and done. Um, because in the end, what you're doing for me, as you've done before, is quick rights, right? Um, these are going to take on even more importance now that we know the AP exam is not the normal AP exam. We still don't know, based off the time I'm recording this, what it's going to be. But my inkling, it's going to be short, quick writes and a bunch of them. So we need to get the practice in now, and we might as well start doing it now and getting comfortable with it and be able to fire these things out really quickly. So just like all the other ones, it will be times. I'll give you about five minutes per question. All right. You will only get one question at a time. So make sure you're prepared, right? Um, before you start, you hit that start button. If you hit that start button and you don't have the stuff in front of you or you haven't really thought about the different topics that we've discussed, that then you might not finish, right? You might be scrambling. So make sure that you go into it and treat it like a testing situation and really prepare, almost study, right? Um, what am I gonna cover? All right, things that are gonna be included in your quick rights, the three R's, all right? The reforms and agencies, so the ones that we talked about um, uh, for the elderly, the unemployed, the farmers, the banking industry, all that stuff, plus the stuff on your chart from first and second New Deal, all right, the environmental ch stuff, the challenges, and ultimately its effectiveness. So this is actually going to be several questions that you're going to need to be answered. So this is kind of complicated stuff. Normally, I'd be giving you a DBQ on this, but since we're not having to do one for the AP exam, most likely, I don't see the point of giving one right now. All right, so um, go ahead and start preparing yourself for your quick write. Make sure you look at those numbers. Um, I want to stress this as well. I use the discussion board thing on Canvas that I mentioned before. I'll talk about it next week. If you have questions about anything I've talked about, because you're probably not the only one. And if I answer it for you, I'd like to answer it so that everyone can see it and everyone can benefit from your, your question. All right, guys. Cool. After this.
World War II, our last topic.